So today we will talk about uh, how we use a multi-component reaction for the ligation strategies of biomolecules, fragments, and also of, for the synthesis of natural product hybrids. This uh, research topic started about 2008 when I started my, my independent career, when I came back from Germany. And therefore, I created my, my own group at the Faculty of Chemistry of the University of Havana that is currently formed by five PhD students and six master students. And in four years, we have been uh, able to form one PhD student and five master with uh, 19 publications since this uh, research field was started at the, uh, about five years ago, four or five years ago. Also, the, I would like to share what was the, the aim of my group. The idea at the beginning was to, of course to develop methods and strategies for the synthesis, either for the synthesis or modification of bioactive natural products, not only to synthesize them, but also to derivatize or modify some bioactive natural products because this is the main goal of the center in which I'm working now, is the Center for Natural Product Studies. And I was also quite uh, interested in the synthesis of analogs and mimetics or mimics of this of some natural uh, products uh, uh, showing relevant biological activities. The international cooperation, especially with this institute, was the institute uh, in which I did my PhD work, and the head of that institute likes me a lot, so he accepted my students, my cooperation, my samples for NMR and everything, measurement of everything almost. Also to the Canarian Institute of Cancer Research, and more recently with this department that I hope that the cooperation with this department increases substantially in the next few years. So, the topic that I'm going to talk about is on the utilization of multi-component reaction for the synthesis derivatization, and especially today you will hear about the ligation of natural products and biomolecular fragments. This is a, today's main topic, which is the development of multi-component reaction was one of our ideas at the beginning of my independent career, the, uh, the development of multi-component reaction as general ligation procedures. I will talk about what is a ligation procedure and so on. When you think about ligation, not many people realize what is a real ligation. Ligation is a conjugation approach. But conjugation, the biochemists, they don't like too much to use the, conju the term conjugation for small molecules. They use it only for biomolecules, for large proteins, DNAs, nucleic acids, and so on. So when you are talking about the ligation or the conjugation of a small uh, molecules is better, and in the literature, sometimes some of the referees, we initially started to use the word conjugation, but they uh, actually force us to use the word ligation, which in this sense actually describes better the, the procedure that is uh, taking, uh, that is occurring at that time. So when you think on this chemical ligation approach, you immediately uh, think about it, the native chemical ligation of peptides. It's very well known in, in, in the literature. And everybody hears about the click ligation, so the use of of copper catalyzed cycloaddition process for the ligation of a small molecules to proteins, to nucleic acid, to polysaccharides, to natural products like esteroids, terpenes, lipids, or, or whatever. Also, glycosylation methods can be, uh, can be regarded as a ligation method. So, the glycosylation, the lipidation, or the cyclization is a special type of ligation in which you take a very large molecule and you cyclize this molecule. It's an intramolecular ligation, but it's also considered like a ligation of, for example, medium-sized peptides. Also, the derivatization of natural product, for example, when you attempt to join a triterpene or a lipid to another molecule for whatever aims that you want to or whatever property that you want to incorporate into that molecule, also that can be, for example, a glycosylation or an incorporation of fluorescent tag. Whatever you do to a small natural probe, something can be considered as a ligation approach. So today, we are going to talk about how we use multi-component reaction for the, uh, as general ligation approach. When you take a look to nature's molecule, you see that there are very large peptides which appear glycosylated, you find triterpenes, esteroids, uh, 
wherever uh, small molecules which also appear uh, glycosylated, you find these very interesting molecules which are the glycosphingolipids. They are very uh, present in the membranes of eukaryotic cells. And also you find, for example, that these molecules, they have activity like uh, they have application as tumor-associated antigens. They are in monostimulants. When you take a look to this molecule, you immediately realize that they are not like this one. This is for the ligation of these two molecules, you only have to complete a glycosylation approach. But for example, for this, you have here an sphingolipid molecule, you have here a fatty acid molecule, and you have a glycoside. So you have a, mo a monosaccharide molecule. So when we, at the beginning, when everybody uh, was at this stage of your career where you have to think what you are going to do, there is something new, something different that your supervisor told you to do then we immediately realized that we could use multi-component reaction not for the unification of two molecular fragments, but for the incorporation of three, four, or five molecular fragments in one pot, which is the concept, the real concept of multi-component reaction. You also see a natural product hybrids, which are, for example, cyclic. This is an example of a polyketide natural product, which is a join together in a cyclized scaffold to a polypeptidic scaffold. In this case, you have here a lipidic change with a peptidic change. And also, chemists have uh, introduced the concept of, of, bio of uh, biomolecular hybrids for the synthesis of this type of compounds in which you join the chemical properties of a very lipophilic molecule, like, for example, an esteroids with very hydro... Uh, hydrophilic uh, molecules like are polycationic peptides or sugars. These molecules, they have outstanding application like, for example, this one for the solubilization of membrane proteins. These peptides, uh, hybrids with esteroids, they were described as potent antibacterial agents and so on. So you find that not only nature, but also chemistry think about how the unification of the property of two molecules, two different molecules, can be incorporated in only one to find new properties, new application, and new biological activity. So in this sense, I would like to, I'm giving a, a course on multi-component reaction, but for the people not taking this course, for the people who know, multi-component reaction is a chemical process, and this is the important issue here, that more than two starting materials react in one pot, it needs to be in one pot, to afford a product incorporating a structural element from all the reactants. So, if a catalyst takes place in a reaction but it's not incorporated at the end, it's, it's just a catalyst. It's not, it's not a multi-component process. So, regardless if you see too many components in one reaction but at the end, a structural fragments of only two of them are incorporated in one molecule, it's not a multi-component reaction. We are going to focus only on multi-component reaction. And when you take a look to the literature, you find that more than 70% of these reactions are only for heterocycle and medicinal chemistry. Uh, I don't like so much this chemistry, uh, whatever I don't, I don't claim about it. But when you take it, there is also some application in natural product synthesis and diversity oriented synthesis. But in these areas of research, there is almost nothing done with the use of multi component reactions. So in the catalyst and catalyst, in the in catalysis and the discovery of new catalysts, there is no application of multi component reaction, only one or two articles. Also in the field of supramolecular chemistry and conjugation chemistry. So we Indeed, we decided to focus in one of these areas now with Marcio. You will see in the future that we are focusing on, on the discovery of new catalysts, also using multi-component reaction, and to use this concept. So what happens if we can use a multi-component reaction to ligate four different or three different molecular fragments to obtain a single molecule in only one step? And this was the idea behind uh, our laboratory and behind the creation of our group. Today I will use, I will give examples only of two multi-component reactions. They are isocyanide-based multi-component reactions, and we will hear about they, how they can be used as a ligation methods. This is the Passerini reaction, is the condensation of a carbonyl, carboxylic acid, and an isocyanide to form this alpha siloxy carboxamide. This is called a Depsy peptide. And this UGI reaction is a four-component reaction, in this case, with addition of a primary amine, this is the mechanism, I will not talk about it, just to give rise to this uh, substituted dipeptide motif. So we will talk how we will apply application of this, we will apply this reaction to the modification of peptides 
and every type of natural product, including amide bonds or ester bonds, which can be obtained by this type of multi-component reaction. These are the reviews. The students attending the course are now specialists on this reaction. And initially, we will talk about glycosphingolipids. Glycosphingolipids are a special class of these uh, amphipathic molecules. They have uh, lipidic tails, especially two li lipidic tails. They are very large, so I am unable to, to draw all of them in the, in the slides. And they have mono, di, or three saccharides models. So we really, when you, all chemists, all synthetic chemistry teach students to learn about this connection. You think in a molecule, and immediately you think how I can approach this molecule. You think that there is a glycosylation step here, joining, and then by a lactam formation here, you can join these two lipidic tails. And of course, there are also these, the alpha galactoside ceramide is one of the amazing molecules, it's a natural product, isolated from marine organisms, and has very potent immunostimulant activity. So in Cuba, chemistry is not so developed, but the biotechnology and so on, so to gain to some money, actually I decided to enter in the development of some immunostimulant that I get really some funding from the biotechnology industry of Cuba to, to have money for research. Also, uh, chemists have designed uh, mimics of these compounds just by the incorporation of this special trisaccharide unit here and just the uh, incorporation of the lipidic change, which are the molecular fragment that get incorporated into the membranes and then all the biological activities derive from this. So this is a typical eukaryotic membrane where you find cholesterol, transmembrane proteins, and you find different type of these glycosphingolipids which can be approached, which we will approach by multi-component reaction. These are the biological activity. They have a crucial role in the development, metathesis, and uh, whatever a stage of the, of the cell, uh, cell cycles and so on. So really, we found a background of uh, a family of compounds that we could approach by the multi-component reaction. And this is what we did. Initially, we prepared isocyanides. These compounds, in a small way, they are commercial available, but they can be easily prepared from the primary amines. It's just a formulation followed by dehydration, fatty acids, they are commercial available, and sphingosine. This natural product has to be prepared either by a, a catalytic uh, approach or you can uh, buy it also, though it's expensive. So we get it from, as a gift from a chemical industry in Germany. And then we can, in a multi-component approach, always using formaldehydes, you will see that we try to keep this as much as possible because the, this multi-component reaction that is, we are using is not stereoselectives, so we are running away from all this generation of the asteromers, separation, uh, racemic resolution, all these steps just by using formaldehydes, which is, gets incorporated here. From here to now, you will see that all chemical bonds that are being formed will be highlighted in red, so you can follow really the type of chemical process that is going, uh, is taking, uh, is taking place in this reaction. So we form this uh, trilipidic chain. So this is a very a straightforward way to incorporate a f an additional lipidic chain which does not appear in the original uh, glycosphingolipids. In this original glycosphingolipids, there are only two lipidic chains. You cannot incorporate by traditional method a further uh, lipidic chain only by the use of the concept of a multi-component reaction in which you incorporate three, four fragments in only one step into a unique molecule. So with the use of this glycosyl receptor, in this approach, the formation of the 